Aviation has come a long way, fast, from aluminum and steel to composite frames and skins, from the early biplanes to Boeing 787s and beyond. It has been a fascinating journey that has continued to thrill humankind in ways nothing else does. Among the long list of people who form everyday part of the whole system, aircraft mechanics are those behind-the-scene heroes who have a large part in making flying safe, allowing us to enjoy the blue freedom in ways unimaginable just few decades ago. As aircraft technologies changed and advanced, so did the requirement for aircraft maintenance knowledge, training, and the tools needed to perform essential care. For example, the introduction of composite materials was a revolutionary leap for aviation and with it came the new implement, far more advanced than just a hammer and a screwdriver. Then as the environment shaped out to demand more efficient yet cost-effective methods of aircraft care, artificial intelligence and ergonomics fell in. New maintenance tools allowed mechanics to reduce grounding time for airplanes. They also designed to eliminate maintenance crew fatigue and add to greater safety. Today we will discuss some of those tools to begin with at an aircraft maintenance hangar. Aviation maintenance tools include a whole line of implements used by aircraft engineers to ensure an aircraft's structural soundness, specialized tools used to check fixtures and perform repairs on structures, components, and equipment. Some of these tools are right off the home shelf, others are unique to aviation use. So let us talk some of the stuff. Wrench is a common household tool with few variations on it. For example, here we have a common open-ended wrench, or we can call it a spanner. Then we have a combination variation that has a spanner on one end and gear wrench on the other. Next, take a look at this, an adjustable crescent wrench that comes in various sizes like 10 or 12 inch. Smaller, bigger, sky is the limit. These you can adjust to the grip, allowing the tool to snug up on the nut or whatever that is that you need to hold. Then we have another type of combination wrench, however, this one is a ratcheting box wrench to one end which you don't have to take off to turn, as you can see here. They come in both standard and metric sizes, fraction if standard and metric as a simple number measured in mm. Stubby wrench is another variation of the main wrench type. Same stuff, just a bit stubby. Like the wrench, sockets come in different sizes. The main ones are those half-inch sockets, also called drives. For example, take a look at a socket driver combo. Check out the face. We have the 12-point drive, the 6-point socket, a deep socket, and a shallow socket. Deep and or shallow, this is how you even refer to their sizes. These sockets, like their wrench counterpart, loosen or tighten and put a grip on something. They are a valuable implement at any maintenance repair hangar. And since we are talking about sockets, might as well cover socket extensions. These attachments help you take the socket to reach spots normal ratchet socket cannot. They too come in size variations as 3 quarter inch or half inch drives. Some of these extensions come in ball shape, called the wobble head extension, that allows you to move at an angle. Then we have the flex extensions, also meant for more difficult, tighter spaces. In short, we have the flex head, wobble, or the standard square tip socket head extension. Ratchet drives the socket and are referred to by the size of the socket. You have a quarter inch ratchet a 3 by 8 inch drive ratchet, a half inch and so on so forth. Then there's also the flex head and stubby head ratchet to reach out to places where, let's say nothing else goes. And finally, the ubiquitous good old screwdriver. The screwdriver can be classified by its shape, type of blade and blade length. They do one of two things, tighten or loosen. Screwdrivers happen to be one of the more common tools. From a place in your drawers to the racks at an MRO, you will find all kinds of screwdrivers. We have the regular flathead. There are the long and short stubby pieces, a more common Phillip head screwdriver with a plus sign on it, and this one here with a solid back designed to take a hit and is used to loosen up tough screws. They twist once hit on the solid backside built to take hammer impact. The torque tip is a twist or star head screwdriver that also comes in sizes. 
Please take a look at the square tip screwdriver. The industry has moved to the square tip screwdriver because it snugs well. Unlike the tapering Phillips screwdriver which still might fall loose from the recess, this one here sits firmly in the spot and does not move when turned. It can take tougher screws out of the sockets with everyday effort at work. When using the common screwdriver, select the largest screwdriver whose blade will make a good fit. A common screwdriver must fill at least 75% of the screw slot. If the screwdriver is the wrong size, it cuts and burns the slot, making it worthless. A screwdriver with the wrong size blade may slip and damage adjacent parts of the structure. The common screwdriver is used only where slotted head screws or fasteners are found on aircraft. An example of a fastener that requires the use of a common screwdriver is the camlock style fastener that is used to secure cowling on some aircraft like the Cessna 172. We also have the recessed type screwdrivers meant to fasten or to loosen a head having a specially formed indentation which is centered in its top surface. For such heads, Phillips and positive drive screwdrivers are the most common type in use. Needless to say, there is a lot of variation among tools used on an aircraft, and they also have come in special build. Some are made to cater to aluminum, while others are from composites. For now, delve deeper in what has been presented. In the upcoming lessons, we will talk about calibration tools. Blue skies.